The rings are set, the belts are tied. Ladies and gentlemen, it's karate time. Welcome to Tushi High School and welcome to the 28th annual Walla Walla Karate Do Invitational. I'm your host, Justin Honore. Jackson's background as a wrestler separates him from other fighters and allows him to make throws like this one pretty easily. The word of the season for the Sunnyside Grizzlies is replace. Having to replace numerous starters on offensive line that was named the Big Nine Conference Lion of the Year, as well as a quarterback who was first team all conference. Three different games, all on the same night, all in the same arena. We start things off with girls basketball, then we clear the pole, roll out the mats, dim the lights, and do a little bit of wrestling. Scott, normally around this time tonight, this softball stadium is full of fans cheering on the Lady Bombers. With no more games, that is no longer the case. Tracy, for the first time in a long time, some sort of leisure sport is returning to the Tri-Cities. But there are a few tips you should probably write on your scorecard before teeing off. With no track to practice on, preparing for the season can be difficult. Especially for a hurdler. For Cleelum senior Grace Terrell, scoring goals has always been easy. She's really good with like her feet and stuff and nowhere to place the ball, so speed. She's always really fast and always there for the ball. She's a really dynamic player and is kind of good anywhere you want her on the field. Terrell has played soccer for 15 years, but what she has done in the last four is what sets her apart. 161 career goals and a Yakima Valley record. I just always wanted to keep getting better and keep working on my skill. And my friends would be like, you want to go to the lake? I'm like, no, I got to go to practice. That hard work has her six goals away from another record. Five. The state record set by Seattle Christian's Melissa Bennett in 1999 before she went on to a record setting career at the University of Washington and took her husband's last name of Dunkley. But even though their names sit side by side in the record books, Terrell's relationship with Melissa comes from somewhere more personal. It's actually a really funny story. Um, I babysit for her kids. It turns out that the Melissa Terrell has known for the better part of a year is the same one she's been chasing for her entire high school career. Thanks to a little Facebook digging by her father, they now realize just whose kids Grace has been babysitting was like hey you know do you know this girl do you recognize her and I was like yes like I totally recognize her those are her kids I babysat them. Dunkley herself didn't even know the type of player Terrell was for the year that she knew her. I had no idea that she was you know I was gonna get a, a message from her months later that she's on her way to breaking it. Dunkley's record has stood for 19 years but she's not worried about seeing it change hands. <laughs> She's just glad that a small school product like Terrell is carving out a similar legacy. So it's neat that it's another player from a, a smaller school that can kind of just show that get talented at all different divisions in soccer. Chasing the record is a thrill, but for Terrell, she's more excited about something else. The opportunity to build on a new bond that will stay with her beyond this season and into her college career at Eastern Washington. It would be cool, you know, just to be able to contact her and keep her up to date on my soccer and just how everything's going and maybe babysit her kids again. <laughs> like the old saying goes, it's a small world. Justin Honore, SWX. No crowds in the stands. No batters at the plate. Just an empty stadium that Richland senior Addison Pettit has called home for the past three seasons. It was heartbreaking just to hear that we wouldn't get a senior season. Pettit, like all seniors playing spring sports across the country, won't get to suit up for her high school ever again. But thanks to a national movement called Be The Light, seniors like Pettit across the Tri-Cities will get to experience an atmosphere as if it were game day. We would have gotten to play under the lights, so just having the lights turned on on our home field, like it's just... It means something just because it is where we spend most of our time. Stadium lights from Richland to Kennewick to Pasco will be on display in honor of high school seniors who are no longer in school. A message that Kamiakin baseball senior Kellen Rutt says will be the end of a chapter of his high school career. Athletes that didn't play fall winter sports, I mean, this is our last ride. And then just to get it taken away like that, I think it's extremely important. Um, to the athletes. A final ride that many senior athletes will experience as they pass their prospective stadium as if they were set to play in it once again. We're used to playing in nighttime and like lights are on, fans are cheering, but then 
the fact that we don't get that is extremely sad. So, I'm hoping not to see her, but I uh, probably will. A public display that won't replace the season that could have been, but at least for a night for these 2020 seniors, it's a reminder of the game they love. When your season has kind of gone in the dumpster like the Tri-City Americans has, you tend to circle nights to keep your team engaged. One of those nights, Breast Cancer Awareness Night at your place against the top team in your division in the Portland Winterhawks. Midway through the first half, Cougs up by eight. Robert Franks hits a three plus the foul. Franks was high as a Frank off the grill, hitting eight of his 13 attempts from beyond the arc. With 13 seconds left in the game, we don't settle for field goals. Elijah Tanner finds Max Mayer, who stretches over the goal line for the touchdown, giving the Lions a 19 to 14 victory. Americans on a power play and they commit a big no-no, turning the puck over. That turns into a breakaway and poor town Boyko is left one-on-one -on -one with Mason Mandek who converts it to goal making it 2-0. Winner of this one gets to scan their ticket to the Sweet 16. Unfortunately for the Huskies, that look described the day. Wasn't too long ago when the Seattle Manners finished another disappointing season, almost losing 100 games and finishing in last place of the AL West. But like the old saying goes, the sun will come out tomorrow and the new season is all about new beginnings. Will Thompson, you know, laying the block and develop, hits the acceleration. You gotta beat the kicker, sir. You gotta beat him. He beats them and throws in a stiff arm for a good measure, Cooper. David Chris with the crisp pass to the big man, Sam Timmons, for the dunk. Washington with the early lead. Then less than a minute later, Smith striking again. The equalizer. We're tied at three. This game would go into overtime and ultimately a shootout. Von Olhoffen gets the steal, does a little showtime, putting the ball behind her back to get the lay-in. Riverhawks going to halftime with a 25-22 lead.